Hello and welcome again to my series on how to find out how much isolation you need. Um, going back over what I just said about finding the best and most isolation, as we know, that's really often not practical. Um, On to concrete or block walls, brick walls, anything so massive and rigid as that, even if it's a uh, hollow block, a CMU block wall, um, you can get, if, it, if for instance, if it's a solid concrete block wall, say, uh, oh, 20 centimeters or eight inches thick, you can get up to about 56 dB. That's STC rating, 56, with just that single block. Especially if you paint it very well both sides. That seals the pores, seals everything really well. And you can get a pretty good, respectable level out of just that block wall. Um, this is assuming, of course, that all your other openings, partitions, etc., are perfectly sealed and just as massive. Um, now, when you're when doing a concrete block or brick wall, they usually apply this normal construction in a home or even uh, most most uh, commercial buildings is they'll render the interior surface with a kind of a uh, with with um, furring strips and gypsum board. This is not necessarily that good for isolation, though, and that's simply due to the space or air gap that's involved. You have a small air gap and adding a small membrane mass like a thin gypsum board layer drywall, uh, that's going to create a resonance that's much higher than the resonance of this heavy cement wall. And that will actually reduce the transmission loss of that wall. You're better off without it, in other words. What it does, it raises the, it increases, often increases the high frequency, mid-range isolation, but it will move the coincidence dip up in higher in frequency and allow more low frequency to pass through that wall where without it, it would otherwise be a pretty decent soundproof wall. So be, be aware. If you want, if you need to, um, construct a, a concrete wall or fix a concrete wall so it has more transmission loss and you want to add a, a, a an isolation wall inside of that for instance if you just want to fur it out with with furring channel and it's still connected it's still a coupled partition and you put gypsum board on it you're going to need at least 10 inches of airspace which is crazy and three layers of fire rated gypsum to get down to music frequencies and this is another point I want to make about furring channel and, and clips and things like that that's, that's really become very common in home studios. And it's okay if, you, if that's all the space that you have. It helps. It definitely will help. But only at the upper frequencies. Your, your low end, it's not going to improve. And it often makes it worse. Believe it or not, it will make it worse. Um, so you need the space the air gap filled with insulation to make it work and you need the mass on the partitions <clears throat> uh, this is why another reason why I, as I was saying I don't recommend the furring channel or the um, um, clip type isolation connections with the existing stud walls because I mean you're saving space but that only gives you a gap of 50 millimeter at the most that's you know two inches and the resonance in that cavity just think of it like a membrane trap you're building an enclosed sealed membrane trap the the, the spring level of that air inside there is actually quite high frequency that's that's going to spring at a vibrate at pretty high frequency unless you can get this mass extremely heavy on this side now if you build two walls that are concrete and they're quite substantial mass. Two inches is fine because the spring level with all that mass, it lowers that resonance and you get excellent transmission loss through the partition. So, um, as Clint Eastwood said in Dirty Harry, man's got to know his limitations. So if you know what your limitations are with your budget, 
with your space, you can figure out how much you can get out of a certain space and then it realistically deal with it in the real world. You know your limitations, you know your, 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 if you're going to be bothering neighbors at certain hours and you can't get any better than this, that's all you can do. And that said about neighbors, the best, the best policy is always be friendly, go bring a pie or a cake and say, hey, I'm your neighbor, I, I'm doing this, and I'm, let me know if you ever hear any trouble from my place, and I'll turn it off, you know? And so if you, if you start with something like that, usually works pretty good. So we'll continue this in the next video, uh, talking about gypsum board partitions and how to do those. And be sure to subscribe, and uh, I'll see you again soon. Cheers.